Last night, a new Evil Dead film dropped in theaters. Groovy. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Evil Dead Rise. Now, the Evil Dead franchise is one of my formative horror franchises. I watched Army of Darkness on loop back in the late 90s. So the question is, does this current film live up to the franchise's reputation? Real quick before we get started, this video is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook of your choice by signing up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. If you're an Evil Dead fan, I recommend checking out If Chins Could Kill, Bruce Campbell's first autobiography. It covers his kind of rise to fame working with Sam Raimi on the original trilogy of Evil Dead films. Plus, he's really entertaining and you can listen to it if you like to read with your ears like I do for free by signing up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. And let's get started with the good. And I'll cut right to the chase. The franchise's reputation is intact. This is another solid entry in the Evil Dead franchise that finds a way to deliver the scares and the thrills that you want from an Evil Dead film, but puts it in a new context so it's not just a rehash or a retread of what's done before. And a big part of what makes this kind of movie stand out and interesting is that they move the setting to a high-rise building, an apartment complex. And at first I wasn't quite sure how that would work. How would you explain kind of why the people are still there? What, what kind of goes down with all that? And pretty quickly in the movie, they kind of come up with a rational explanation as to why there's complications that kind of trap them there, as well as tying in some classic Evil Dead sort of mythos where even though a high-rise building apartment complex is very different from a cabin in the woods, they find a way to mirror that same sense of isolation, that sense that you can't escape, where you wanna stay in a room, but you know you're not really safe there. It does all of that, but in a new context, in a new way. And when you're in an apartment, there's all kinds of different opportunities that kind of emerge because of that, fun things that you can do that don't work in a cabin in the woods. And so it's the same stuff that you want, but it's different. Different enough, but same enough to be like right in that sweet spot to be something fresh in the franchise without violating the franchise. Other thing that really worked here is that they make the primary person that's taken over by the evil dead a mother. And the potential victims, children, and her sister. That just adds an additional level of horror to everything that takes place. And there's all these other unsettling elements that come with it. A mother trying to kill her children, that's horrifying. To children, their mother chasing after them, horrifying. The simple difficulty that comes with that with the nature of the evil dead, that they're manipulative, they lie to you, they're always trying to play against your emotions and your trust, and they do that to a small little girl. And so there's all these new things that come up, all sorts of new emotions that play into it because of everything taking place. Likewise, there's a lot more, feels like there's a lot more at stake when it comes to the concept of surviving, when it's not just some 20 something not wanting to die, but an aunt wanting to save her nephews and nieces from the her sister that's turned evil, the mother of the children that's turned evil. That has a whole other layer to it that's exciting and thrilling. It's an Evil Dead movie, so of course you also have to talk about the violence, the kills, and if you've seen the trailer, you know, the Red Band trailer, you know this movie is jam-packed with squirm-inducing moments. All of the kills just have some gnarly element to them. Whenever one of these infected people 
is talking to someone, there's always some little extra ingredient that's just messed up involving glass or peeling a skin, just stuff that's not just limb cut off, but things that are truly like, oh, 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 that's the way you did that? And so many interesting, gnarly, brutal kills in here that are everything that you want from an Evil Dead film. And then there's also plenty of little Easter eggs in the film. References, quotes, the stuff that uh, as a fan you want in there, but finding a way to do it that, that isn't a little bit too on the nose. And I, I think they, they found a pretty good balance in how they brought some of these things up. And I'll, and I'll say this, it's a movie for me that got better as it went along. We'll get back to that in the negatives, but this it's the kind of movie that by the time you're in the third act and it's really going down and it's getting crazy and tense and people are trying to escape and doing everything in their power. It's thrilling, it's exciting, it's nasty. It's all of the different things that you want it to be. So at the end of the day, another solid Evil Dead film. But there's a little bit more going on here, so let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. The big one when it comes to the quality of the film is that because the Evil Dead films up to this point in time are so kind of defined by either Cabin in the Woods or Bruce Campbell, that when you take it and you put it in a high-rise building, it's very much about kind of a family dynamic. No one's saying groovy all the time. It can feel different. And even looking at some early reactions from last night, some people just like, it just saying things like, it just feels like another generic modern day possession film. I would, I wouldn't fully agree with that, but I can see where people are coming from. I've sensed that a little bit in particular in the first half of the film before the Evil Dead stuff really gets going and you're just kind of hanging out with these people in an apartment. It definitely has a different vibe to it. Some of that's a good thing that we're not just rehashing, but also there's that Evil Dead experience and things that you expect and it it's different enough that that for some people might not work. It wasn't, it was an issue for me. We'll get into that in a little bit, but also kind of appreciated it. Some people it might be very off-putting. Other couple of things to talk about here. These aren't necessarily good or bad things, just things to discuss. Do you need to watch the other Evil Dead films to watch this movie? No, this is very much designed as a, a standalone Evil Dead film. However, if you're a horror fan, why haven't you watched the Evil Dead movies? <laughs> Go watch the Evil Dead movies, they're awesome. But you don't have to watch them before you watch this one. Other thing, question you gotta ask with modern day franchise films, is there a mid-credit or post-credit scene? No. The person I went to go with said that a review he said, he watched, did say there was a post-credit scene. There was not. At the end of the credits, there's a noise, but it's not like a, a scene. It's not a thing that teases anything. There's just a, literally just a noise at the end of the credits. From there, let's move on to the bad. So as I mentioned earlier, I felt this movie got better as it went along. And I went into the movie expecting to just love it. The initial Rotten Tomatoes score of this film coming out of South by Southwest was 100%. Last time I checked, it was still at 96%. And it seems like almost everyone is loving the film, except like one guy at the South by Southwest premiere like wigged out and had to be escorted out of the room. This sucks. What? What are you doing here? Get the out of here. Yeah. Keep Austin weird, right? There was no alcohol involved in that whatsoever. But other than that, people seem to be really enjoying the film. So I expected to just like love it. And it took me a while to warm up to the film. And it really wasn't until it got going with all of the horrifying stuff that I started to kind of get in sync with the film. And I was trying to pinpoint exactly what, what was it that just, I wasn't jiving with the movie. And I think some of it is that it, it tries to be a little bit more character based, but I didn't care about the characters. And what I mean by that is that you're kind of tracking with this, the ant character and kind of what's going on with her. And then 
her relationship to her sister and the family dynamic and her children and the arc and themes they're building about motherhood do work, but the specific characters weren't very interesting. And what I mean by that is it's it's like the brother is listens to loud music guy. Aunt is guitar tech that maybe is irresponsible. Uh, like it, it's kind of that base, like if you want me to describe anything about the mother, it's kind of like freeform parenting. Like I, I can't really say much about them or describe them, but it's trying to be a little bit more character based in what it's trying to spending time with them to make you care about them. And I just didn't care about them for the first third of the movie. It was kind of like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not getting into this all that well until things start getting crazy and the family's in peril, in which case it becomes action based. Then it, it, it worked for me. And still not exactly sure what what it, where's the big mis- disconnect there because the Evil Dead movies outside of Ash these are not memorable characters. <laughs> Likewise, and I think this probably also ties into why I didn't latch onto the beginning of it. The setup under which the Necronomicon is found red, I just didn't buy it. Just the the basic setup of the film. So I was thinking, like, how on earth is the the undead going to get unleashed? Where is it? Where are they going to get the Necronomicon and what they come up with? The scenario that unfolds. I in this context where they're at, I'm not buying into it. And then in the third act, they do something new and different for an Evil Dead film with what's kind of going on. I didn't like it. It wasn't horrible. It didn't ruin the movie for me, but I went, ah, uh, nah, that's not for me. That You tried something new and different. That wasn't for me. You, you, you went for it. Like the actual final battle and the way things closed out, that was cool. But the specific thing that they did with the undead, not my favorite direction for them to to go with some things real quick before i give you my final thoughts be sure to join me down below in the comment section what did you think about evil dead rise also i've done a ton of horror content in the past i will be updating my ranking of the evil dead movies this weekend and i'll be throwing in ash vs the evil dead in there as well uh, but i've done a ton of horror rankings you can check that out in this playlist right up here if you love a horror franchise i've probably already talked about it in the end, I went into this movie expecting to love it. Didn't love it, but I did like it a good bit. It delivers the gore, the thrills, and a fresh new setting, while not necessarily delivering on the characters and story level. Overall, I'll give this one a B on the entertainment scale, a 7.5, and Evil Dead fans, you gotta go see this film. Overall, it's a B on the entertainment scale, a 7.5, and Evil Dead fans should see this film in the theaters. Remember, if you want to get that free audiobook, the link is down below in the description audibletrial.com slash sean chandler you can get bruce campbell's autobiography and hear his behind the scenes story about the making of the original evil dead trilogy got more evil dead content coming this weekend thank you so much for watching keep talking movies and tv too much Bye bye